Welcome to Low Country Spotlight. I'm your host, Margie Pizarro. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to see what wonderful things we have going on in the Low Country. And of course, on this week's program, we do not fail in giving you some wonderful ideas and wonderful events about things we've got going on. And today we have um, someone that I've just recently met, but he's written this book entitled The Hidden Gem, and it actually looks at plants and animals and wildlife along the Goose Creek Reservoir. But quite honestly, I am considering him to be a hidden gem to this community because I think that he is full of a lot of knowledge and information. So this is a wonderful opportunity for us at Little Country Spotlight to have an opportunity to hear some of that. So today in the studio, we have Mr. Carl Postel. Carl, thank you so much for coming to Little Country Spotlight. Thank you. We are so happy you could be here. Now, your background is rather varied. Um, when you look at this book that you've written, because you are actually a retired Wesleyan minister. Yes. You have a background in biology, yes. uh, and you call yourself an amateur photographer, yes. but in looking at some of the pictures that you have in your book that we'll get to later on in the show, I can't imagine that anything about you is amateurish. <laughs> Tell us a little bit what, about, about your background and um, what you've done prior to becoming um, kind of someone who is highlighting or putting a spotlight on the wildlife and animals in this area. Well, we, we started kayaking. Mm -hmm. late in life okay and loved it okay and we found a place to live on the backwater of the Goose Creek Reservoir mm -hmm. and we started kayaking out through there okay and I started out with digital cameras and taking pictures and with the biology background well what is this yeah and 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 then I started putting a few things together on paper and when I could see it and when it was there yeah. and and a little bit one page led to another and wow and before you know it you have a book how long have you been doing this is this has this been like over the course of a couple of years more like 12 12 years wow so basically you all decided that you wanted to kayak and kayaking was a hobby of yours, and you took the kayaking to a level of where I'm seeing all these things and I want to know what they are. Yes. Well, that's a wonderful way to even begin the process. I don't even know very much about kayaking. Tell us a little bit about, about your exploits in kayaking, how you even came to enjoy that part of the hobby. Uh, my son-in-law uh, was in the, in the military, mm -hmm. and they had an outing in Georgia, and I learned the first lesson that okay. you don't reach. You don't reach out of the you, kayak. Yeah, you don't <laughs> reach very far off. So I got soaked within the first three minutes of kayaking. Okay. But within the first 20 minutes, I okay. knew I was hooked. Wow. Now, was it, um, is a kayak, it's a two, kind of a two man, or, or you can do it you solo? Can, you can get them either way. Okay, so basically 12 years ago or more, you actually took kayaking lessons and then be developed a love for that. I've and never had a lesson. No, no, never had a lesson. Just the one, just the one instance where you were told, don't ever reach. I took a lesson to try to learn how to roll, but I never figured it out. They gave up on me. Okay, okay. But get the wide ones and they're more stable. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do photography from mm -hmm. a kayak, get one with a rudder because it'll help you stay on point. Okay, okay. Now let's, let's go back to before kayaking. Your background is in biology. Tell yes. us a little bit about, did you actually work in the biology field? Did I you work a in a You were a biology teacher. Wonderful, where did you teach in what area? Uh, Turkey Valley Schools okay. in, in Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I taught two years on the mission field in Puerto Rico. Okay. And always wondering what is here and what is there. Mm -hmm. and, so you've had kind of had that genuine inquiry about life and, and what yes. things are, kind of what we try to teach to our children, being an old educator, I know that well. And how did you end up from Turkey Valley to Goose Creek, South Carolina? Uh, we, we, uh, well, I went to seminary mm -hmm. in, in uh, Kentucky at Asbury, mm -hmm. and from there we came here to start a church. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Okay. And then once you retired, you said you kind of settled along the Goose Creek Reservoir and then yeah. the rest is history. Yes. Well, did you have any formal training in photography? I mean, you, you, no. we, we know about the kayaking and we know not to reach and we know that that was, you didn't really have any lessons in that, but just, just got a pic, got a camera and started snapping pictures. Yes. Just what? figure out a little bit by a little bit and, and you know, the, the, the professionals, they know all the gadgets and how to do it. But, you know, I found that the birds don't stay still. Okay. <laughs> so, so you can have all of that yeah. expertise, but when it comes down to it, when a bird is flying, the only thing you can do... Well, I used to hunt. Okay, okay. So I, I consider myself a hunter. I just use a camera. So you basically had a lot of skills that kind of went into this from your biology background, your natural curiosity to find out what these things were. You did, in some ways, learn how to kayak. And then being a hunter at least gave you uh, the ability to kind of follow the birds and to be, be able to keep yeah. up with them. And there, sometimes you just observe, know mm -hmm. when they're there, and then you set yourself up and take the picture when you know they're there. There are some pictures in the book yeah. that it took me a month to get a couple of those pictures. Wow. Okay, tell us a little bit about where, where you lived um, in terms of where you lived and how that enabled you to be able to take these pictures and make this wonderful document. I live on the backwater of the Goose Creek Reservoir. Okay. More like a swamp area. Uh-huh and it's right in the middle wow. so i can go out and there's some little islands behind so if it's windy we don't have to go very far mm -hmm. and still be able to see birds and wildlife and gators and and all kinds of things there are, it's a hidden gem because there's more wildlife per square mile mm -hmm. in the goose creek reservoir than just about any place that I've been. Wow. And do you think that people realize that and have that kind of appreciation? No, no they don't. Yeah. Because that's why I call it the hidden gem, yeah. because it's sitting right in the middle of us. Mm -hmm. There are some, there are houses all the way around it mm -hmm. in, in most places, and there's woods, mm -hmm. and there's very few entry places to it if you don't live directly on it. Wow, and and you know, it, again, from the perspective of us really not knowing, you know, the value of this and how it's such a wonderful asset to the community. It is. Yeah, we're so happy that you've written this book that will allow us to be able to do that, to, in, to look at it so we can enjoy it. So don't go anywhere, you don't go anywhere either. We've got more coming up with Carl. He is actually going to show up some pictures from the book, The Hidden Gem. Don't go anywhere, we've got more Low Country Spotlight coming right up. Mm -hmm. 